Not only is the price of water going up, a hinterland business owner is outraged by the rising costs associated with septic tanks. State government registration fees have increased more than 1,000 per cent, leaving him shortchanged and furious. It's a pristine position in the hinterland that's costing Jamie Engies more than he first thought. Last week, the historic river mill owner received a septic tank registration bill from the state government, totalling $5,100. Last year, he paid just $500. When you get shot out of the water with a $5,000 bill to pay in two weeks, it uh, obviously puts a strain on, on everything and obviously the business as well. A Derm spokesperson says the increase was for potentially harmful environmental activity. The local member is outraged. $2,500, $2,800? I mean, are they joking? This is just ridiculous. Even more so, considering Jamie has to pay council and a local plumber an extra fee to maintain his septic tanks. There's little he can do. Obviously without the, uh, a licence uh, from the EPA we, we, we don't have a business because basically we'd have uh, portable toilets on site which obviously is, um, it, it, you just can't do it. I'd like to know what the total sums have been charged across the state. Tom Vigottis, Nine Gold Coast News. It's been a turbulent start to 2011 for Gold Coast City Council. The controversial issues of tiplers, a new Rabina staff headquarters and soaring water prices are sparking growing community unrest. Tonight, Nine News has been granted an exclusive and rare interview with the man running the engine room of the city, Council CEO Dale Dixon. He spent eight years in one of the city's top jobs, but since the All Connects debacle, Dal Dixon's been caught in the crossfire. Sack the bastards. Water charges have surged 20%. Mr Dixon says another 15% hike is headed our way when the draft pricing policy is made public. But they won't be a, res a, a result of councils gouging or profiteering. Instead, the CEO lays blame squarely on Anna Bly's mission to drought-proof Queensland. The infrastructure that has been put in place to respond to the drought has to be paid for. Ratepayers are also picking up the tab to establish All Connects, an organisation which Mr Dixon helped set up, along with CEOs from Logan and Redland Shire Councils. All three were on the interim board, but now he claims their hands have been tied. In that role, though, did you have anything to do with the pricing structures or, or strategies? The answer to that is no. But the council, even though it is about a 62.5% shareholder in Orkinex Water, he doesn't have control. That may seem hard to believe, but our city's leaders say it's all due to an unworkable water model designed by the state. So are there any regrets on how the issue's been handled? It was all done in, in haste. Um, would we do anything differently? Well, I think uh, time will tell. But... Residents, no doubt, will let their votes do the talking during next year's local elections. As for a potential successor to Ron Clark, Mr Dixon wouldn't be drawn into the debate. Eddie South, good mayor? Not? How would you rate him? I, I would prefer not to make any comments about Councillor Sarov. Margaret May. Um, I think, given that we're now effectively in an, in an election campaign, it would not be appropriate for me to make any comments about any candidates for mayor. And tomorrow night, we'll bring you part two of our interview with Dale Dixon.